Good morning all. This is the XTAR BC8 uh, AA sized battery charger and XTAR have also supplied me with this 18 watt wall adapter. So let's open this package up like so. Now XTAR have also very kindly supplied these two 1.5 volt lithium-ion rechargeable cells. Manual is here and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got indicator lights which are just red or green, so charging or charging complete. Um, it takes 1.5 volt AA or AAA lithium or 1.2 volt AA or AAA nickel metal hydride and you can mix them because each bay is totally independent. Um, charging function, stuff your batteries in and they start charging. There really isn't much more to it than that. So I will charge these um, supplied lithium AAs and I also have some ladder which are from IKEA. I've got some 2450s and I've also got these ladder. Uh, these are the 1900s. Now normally you wouldn't choose to buy uh, batteries that were a lower capacity but these have another advantage and that is their slightly smaller diameter. You can see these uh, ladder 2450s don't actually fit terribly well in here. They're a bit of a tight fit. I suppose you can get them in. No you can't. Push one in the other one pops out. Now the charging current of this battery charger is half an amp 0.5 amps However, it does say down here that when the power supply is insufficient, and that's because it only pulls two amps from the USB. So there it is loaded up with three of the larger ladders and three of the smaller ladders and the two XTAR 1.5 volt lithiums. Uh, I'll use the cable that came with it, plug it into a power bank and we'll get charging. Uh, this supplied cable is a USB type C one end to a type A the other but it's coloured orange as a sort of hint that um, you should be using Quick Charge 3. Well, this power bank has Quick Charge 3, so that should work. Let's give it a try. So that's it plugged in and charging. All the lights are red, so they're all charging. Now the ladders, these white ones are full. These grey ones are completely empty because my stair light had gone really dim last night. And these two, I think, are full because I charged them in this charger yesterday. So let's have a look at the voltage and current that's being pulled by the power bank. So I'll just take that out momentarily. Stick this in. Oh, it's the other way up in there. And let's see what the numbers are. And well, it hasn't gone to nine volts, which is interesting. Maybe it's actually the nine volts is on the green connector. I don't honestly know on this power bank. That hasn't gone to nine volts either. And I've just tried a different power meter and this is also uh, running at five volts. So the battery charger hasn't pulled nine. I'm just wondering actually, I think these cells charge up to four volts because I think when, when it charges these cells, it charges them because all that's inside here is a 3.7 volt lithium ion cell and a little uh, buck converter board at the top. But I've got a feeling these charge at the full voltage. We can test that. I'll put a D DMM on there. I can't get the probe down to the positive. So I'm going to use an LED just so I can use its leg. Let's measure that. No, I still haven't managed to get onto there. That is still red, isn't it? Yeah, so that's charging. Ah, okay, yes, 4.29. Oh, that's quite high, isn't it? 4.29 volts. What's on the other one? Maybe this is important. Oh no, there we are. 4.5. That's very high, isn't it? Is there some sort of internal resistance element inside these cells? Yeah, 4.5. Well, that one has now gone green. Now it does say on here, end of charge voltage, 4.20 plus or minus 0.05 volts uh, for lithium. Oh, you can't see that. And 1.45 volts plus or minus 0.1 is for nickel metal hydride. 
Right, now I've plugged um, the supplied charger, which is, I presume, 5 volts or 9 volts, into this unit, and it has taken it up to 9 volts, so maybe that power bank uh, had some sort of issue with the Quick Charge 3, but uh, this supplied adapter is supplying the unit with 9 volts. So pretty simple to use, uh, no adjustable currents, no voltage readings, just red and green lights. Um, so I think what we need to do now is take this thing apart. So let's get all the cells out. And I've noticed that there are six screws on the bottom. So let's take them out and have a look inside. Incidentally, this thing about the um, diameter of the cells, this ladder 1900 fits in my uh, Fenix torch. What is this thing? Fenix E11 um, with a bit of rattle there. The 25, the 2450 fits in there with a bit less rattle. Now this um, 1.5 volt lithium cell, it's a bit of a tight fit and it's also, its diameter is not entirely consistent all the way around, but it's, it's probably too tight a fit to fit in there with some guarantee that I'm going to be able to get it back out. Um, let's try this Fenix LD15 and yes it does fit in there but uh, you have to be a little bit careful with some of these cells there that are a little bit wider diameter uh, sometimes they don't fit in things. Okay let's remove these six screws from the bottom of the unit. Actually, I'll just have a quick look at that uh, it probably says much the same as is in the manual. Uh, interesting, 1.5 volt lithium ion battery output. This says 5 volts, uh, 0.5 times 8 pieces, which would be uh, 4 amps, wouldn't it, at 5 volts. So it would have to throttle the current back, I think, for that. 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride output, 1.45 volts. Is where it stops charging. Now I don't know whether this does a delta V thing looking for the top of the charge voltage. It may not. It may just be simply charging to 1.45 volts which is probably okay to most nickel metal hydrides. Right the six screws are out. Inside we have this. Yes I suppose with a huge hole in the middle of this thing this board had to be split into two parts. Now, how easy is it to take these out? Are they fixed in it? No, they don't appear to be fixed in. Uh, but it's probably going to require sort of easing this out. Oh no, that's come out quite easily. Okay, that one's out. How do I get this other one out? Uh, oh, this has these metal plates slid up into grooves. That seems to be coming out. And there it is. Well, the board with the negative connections, you've got the uh, AA negative connection and the little AAA uh, negative connection down there. All that appears to be is eight connections running back to this eight-way ribbon cable and running back to the main board. So there's very little to say about that board. On this board, we have a chip here, which we'll take a look at in a moment. Um, there are eight inductors here with really only one other than diodes one active device so i don't know whether that is an individual buck converter we'll have to take a look at those and then on the top side now there are these 16 pin ic's but they've all got no markings on them there's another 16 pin ic there so five ic's maybe that's a controller and maybe these are uh, charge purpose-built charger chips perhaps a dual channel uh, we've got some LEDs up here diodes and there's a big inductor wrapped in heat shrink here a couple of capacitors electrolytic and that's really all that's on here so let's I can't tell you what these chips unfortunately are because uh, they have no markings on them but we can look at the ones on the bottom well, it looks like the little 3-pin SOT23 is a D05LG, so we'll look that one up. And this 8-pin SOIC is a CX885, 
five is that? Well, I can't find anything on the little SOC23 uh, controller chip there, but I have found a data sheet for the CX8855, just printing that out now. Right, well, this data sheet's uh, largely in Chinese, but we've got a few things here. We've got five volts, four amps, uh, eight pin chip, and the application circuit shows it with an inductor. Well, that will be the big inductor on the top side, the one in heat shrink there. There's a little current sense resistor there, which is on here. It's uh, there, right next to the chip. And then the usual suspects, output capacitors here, which are these two on the top side. So that's it really. It's a, a simple to use charger. Uh, no functions to adjust or switch, um, but it does charge both your nickel metal hydrides and uh, if you have them, these 1.5 volt lithium ion cells. So that's it really. Uh, that's the XTAR BC8 nickel metal hydride and 1.5 volt lithium battery charger with USB-C input. Now I'll put a full set of uh, links and information down in the description below. But for the moment, cheerio.